G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now I have been working hard on this Tamiya Honda F1. So, um, look, <laughs> it's finished. Well, not quite. Uh, I have put a lovely paint job on there and, and it took a lot of doing. It took me a whole day to get this white paint job nice and glossy and nice and shiny, nice and even. I'll talk to you all about that. I've also painted up all the sprues, right? Here's a photo. All the sprues were completely painted, and well, all the parts were completely painted on the sprues. Insanity? Well, no, actually. Tell me a recommended in the instructions, and it's kind of a method I like to use, especially with small fiddly parts. Get as much paint as you can on the sprues, and then when you assemble, you've only got to really do some touching up. It really makes it a lot easier. So that's all done. That interior we sort of did last time, and that was all um, rubber banded up. Still got a few little fit issues working on those, but it's starting to look really nice. At least I think so. So there's a lot to get through in this video. There's a lot of painting and finagling and fiddling. Look, I hope you hang in there with me. I'll also explain how I did the whole thing with cordless airbrushes. Yeah, not a single compressor on the floor plugged into the wall was used. Yeah, so no electricity. Oh, well... There's electricity in the batteries. Yeah, okay, you know what I mean. Oh, goodness me. All right, let's get on with it. Roll the music. Welcome back. As you can see, I have been very busy here. Some things have been painted up very shiny. So that is using Green Stuff World chrome which is terrific stuff i had used that previously in the st louis video where i had uh, hand painted on the hairy brush but this time i have used the airbrush and you certainly get a shine i mean you really want to get the parts looking nice and smooth because yeah it's chromey and that's just two passes that's it not even two coats just two passes one coat so they've all come up very well and I needed those. I experimented. That one was done on matte black and it still was shiny. That was done straight over the plastic, which was sort of a grey colour, a bit dull. Haven't used any gloss at all. Like normally the trick is you'd use like a gloss black and you'd paint over the top of that. That's kind of the rule. But um, it probably would come out even shinier. But I mean, look, look at the reflections I'm getting on that. That's chrome. It's beautiful. On the black sprues, I painted them. Black again with solder rays, which kind of, you know, feels like you've done nothing. It's a bit depressing. But they do look just a bit snappier as they come up a very nice satiny colour. And it's certainly better looking than just plastic. So um, they come up well. Now I masked out, as I did over here, I masked out the, um, the black and then chromed in some of the parts that still were on the sprue that I could um, paint up. The parts are called for metal, just a metal look. I've used um, Style Res Metal, so it's exactly named correctly for the, uh, the course, and they look good. And that's like this part here, which I think is a, um, a gearbox casing, I don't know, let me know, it sort of looks like it. So any of the loose parts, I've put on little uh, pointy sticks and paint them up, and that's the metal colour. So it gives you that dull sort of look, it's not as shiny as the chrome, but that is perfect for just basically what is an aluminium type part, which is kind of the colour it's trying to emulate. But um, a lot of the time I had to mask off things so that I could paint up the chrome. So that was done on both the sprues. Both the sprues I painted metal, needed chrome bits and um, black. I could have taken them off and in case, some cases, because it was like too fiddly to mask around. And also maybe one half had fallen off uh, like these. I chose just to assemble the parts like this one. Because... They had nothing inside, there was just the two parts, they went together. So that was it, it was a simple sub-assembly, away it went, I did this one as well. So those two were fine to be sub-assemblies, that's all you needed to do with them. Other parts, like, you know, like possibly that gearbox, and also the main case, you can't put those together without doing a whole lot of other stuff. So I left those, I didn't worry about those. On some of the sprues like this one, I had black parts that I painted. And there were also metal parts in here. Is um, a bit of a bugger to peel it off, but take my word for it. In there is actually a metal coloured part, but this whole thing had been painted metal to start with. And then I'd masked out or taken off parts to get chrome. In fact, you can see there's the metal colour there, right? On that one. And when you put the bling on it, good eyeing, 
All right, she's very shiny now. So I sort of left things on there as much as possible. And you might think, you're insane, Harry. How that's going to be really difficult to paint later on. Well, actually, it isn't. It isn't at all because I have found over the years, black stonerets can be easily touched up with matte black life colour. It's a water-based paint. Stylerets is a polyurethane, polyurethane acrylic, water-based as well. This blends in nicely. You can sometimes even blend Stylerets in, but it's easy to do with Life Color. And Life Color's natural metal, it matches the metal Stylerets. So with those two, I can actually touch up both the matte black and the metal. And what about the chrome, I hear you ask? Well, that's where a Molotov liquid chrome pen comes in. Or there is a version, as I said, of this green stuff chrome, which is brush paintable. So, um, you know, hairy brush paintable. So either way, I can touch up little, you know, sprue cuts. And if I've got to basically clean up something, I mean, it's a Tamiya kit. There's nothing to clean up. No seam lines. Well, actually, there have been so far. There have been some seam lines. And even a tiny bit of flash or something. <gasps> Shock horror, I know, I know. Oh dear, the Tamiya fanboys will roll over in their graves and froth at the mouth. Yep, yep. It's a kit. It's plastic. Those things happen. It's okay. For my airbrushing, I have actually been using a variety of cordless compressors. I mean, I know that one sort of looks like it's got a cord. It doesn't. It has a hose. But anyhow, this is from Neat and Handy, and I have done a complete review on it. And it has a removable battery. So I've got a spare battery, which I can have charged up and pop in at any time. And I've been running my Revolution. That's for doing Style Res. That pumps Style Res out perfectly. So all that priming that I've done on the sprues for the metal color and the um, black, all style rays. and when I did the um, yellow on the uh, body, which I'll show you in a sec, style rays, all style rays, polyurethane, water based primer. So that is terrific, and that handles it no problems at all. So love that one. Now, when I was doing the silver, because I find metallic paints, and also seeing as this particular paint that I used from Green Stuff World is alcohol based. And alcohol based paints and water based paints, they are different. They can both be acrylics, but they are different. When you mix alcohol and water based paints in the same airbrush, you will get snot. Anybody that's had Tamiya, right? Tamiya's acrylic paint, which is butanol based, and then they've gone and used AK or Valleyho and wondered why their airbrush all gummed up and said, oh, these bloody acrylic paints are rubbish. Well, they're not. You just don't understand the chemistry. Tamiya paint, alcohol, butanol specifically. And that reacts really badly with water-based acrylics like Valleyho, AK, Ammo Mig, Life Color, and so on. Stylerez, sometimes you get away with it, sometimes you don't. But that's the truth. So what I do, to cut a long story short, is um, I'm just using this for my metallics. <laughs> and this is the cord, well it's not, it's cordless, but it's got this hose, right? This hosed cordless airbrush, because there's no power cord which is the Gazubras one or wherever it is. It's got a stupid name. And this is one that was sent to me. I did a review on. And um, yeah, it's sort of okay. And I gave it a good review. And then I was doing some airbrushing and this rattle, rattle, rattle fell off the bench. Because basically when you're airbrushing, you're pulling with the hose and eventually it's going to do that. That's why I hate a hose on this. Because this weighs bugger all. And when that fell to the floor, my other battery snapped its coupler and it's now useless. So it will not do that, all right? So the little coupler there broke, and now my spare battery is useless. Luckily, there is two batteries, so I'm okay. That one's fine. Their airbrush, surprisingly, was quite good. I sprayed all the uh, metallic stuff, had no issue at all. And I said that was alcohol-based, so that's what I put in this. But I'm keeping this just for metals. This thing at full charge is ferocious. I was spraying out at least, at least 30 PSI. And I went through the paint very quickly. So I had to sort of feather 
on the airbrush to try and sort of reduce how much was coming out. So that's interesting. But now we'll be getting to the body and I'll be painting with a different kind of paint. The only off-white racing colour that I could find that matched what I needed for my Honda was by Mr Hobby. Now I've never used these guys. I'm told they're a bit like Tamiya paints, so we'll assume alcohol. Hopefully it's not as bad butanol. It'll just be an alcohol mix. I did buy their proprietary thinner, and I don't know what I've done with the bottle. I'll have to hunt around. It's here somewhere. I put it in a safe spot, but I bought their thinner to use with their paint. I've got my Neo on this one, which is the No Name airbrush. That's literally its name, No Name. It's absurd. Uh, this was from Spray Gunner, the US, and I've reviewed this one as well. This cordless is terrific. It does come with a proprietary airbrush. It's very similar to that one from Kazubra, sort of a name was. Uh, but I've put my Neo on here, and my Neo fits nicely with a bit of adaption, and that gives me a really nice airbrush to use. Now, this one, like Kazubra's one, is automatic, right? The, the Zubris one, at least you can switch it off and on, so you, you cannot accidentally bump it, it turns itself on. This one, though, if it's sitting around and gets bumped over, it could just turn itself on and wear your battery out. Now, I've just charged the battery on this. I didn't need to. I've always had all the charges. It's always been fully charged every time i tried to use it. I've never, ever run it flat. Uh, so it's been a great little workhorse. And I use it if I'm using Tamiya paint or if I need to do something with alcohol that's non-metallic. Okay, so this is what we're going to do here. I'm going to find that bottle of thinner for Mr. Hobby, <laughs> Mr. Hobby's aqueous thinner, and uh, we will start looking at the body. Well, first, we probably need to look at how that stoner is dried. And I've had everything in this little container, which can be airtight, but I've let the air ventilate through. But this has stopped any dust settling on it while it's dry and curing. Not that Stoner Res takes very long to cure, but because I'm going to put alcohol over this and because I want a really good finish, I wanted Stoner Res to do its trek for self-leveling. And yeah, that feels pretty good. I'm going to do a very light sand with some really ultra fine sanding paper. I've got some 3M stuff, a sanding sponge. I'll just run over it just in case there's a cat hair somewhere that I can't quite see on camera. But basically, um, it's looking pretty lello, right? Now, I could have used white, yes, as a primer. Could have used grey, sure. Uh, white Stoner Res is very hard to spray, and uh, I think my white has just about expired its usefulness. So white I often avoid. Grey would have been fine, but then that might have made it a little bit darker with the off-white going over the top. I felt that off-white that I bought is not really yellow enough for me. I'd like a little bit of yellow in it. So I reckon that Mr. Aqueous off-white over this sort of light yellow, uh, I might get a really nice result. That gives me the kind of color that I want. Now there are only a few other things that I needed to um, to spray there. Little, uh, these are for holding on struts and I could have glued them to the body now, sure, but as I explained in previous videos, you're not quite sure exactly where the struts going to sit and knowing from building aircraft, something like this you leave and you would put it on when you've got the struts in place because it can move by a little millimeter or two and just like the warping that I've got, if I put these on guessing and then I put the struts on they didn't fit, we'd have all kinds of alignment issues, and we don't want that. And the only other thing was, um, well, actually one of the other things, is the uh, rear view mirrors. These are not the version that I'm using, so I'm only using those ones. And I've already assembled them. They have a bottom and a top part. I've already done that. And also floating around here, oh yeah, you've got to have the schnoz. Use the right hand, Harry. Yeah, use the schnoz, yeah. This is a very delightful glove I've got. Allows me to touch things without putting grease on them at this stage. And there should be a flap. Show everybody your flaps, Harry. Yep, okay. And that's the little uh, flap that goes over the front here, which covers those few parts that we've actually put in, which were the um, clutch and braking reservoirs. So there we are. Time for me to just give this a very fine sand, make sure it's perfectly smooth. Then we're going to hit it with the off-white gloss. Cross fingers. I finally found that bottle of thinners. Yep, it was hiding there all the time. <laughs> it was hiding in the box with all my thinners. Yeah, wouldn't you believe it? Yeah, it's the last place I'd look. Now, I uh, mixed up this stuff. Now, it's pretty thin. I was amazed how thin it was, but everyone said mix it 50-50 with the thinner. So I thought, all right, I haven't used this one before. I'll do that. So brand new eyedropper here. One squirt, one measure. 
That's it. Okay, this is to test. And screw on, put that away, Harry. Yes. Another one. Absolutely clean. One squeeze again. And away she goes. Now, what I do here is rather than putting a stick in there and contaminating, is I use a trick that I stick the eyedropper in and gather and squirt. I've left this overnight to fully cure its breathing in here because you see I always leave it diagonally so that it does breathe underneath but it stops the dust getting onto anything. Have we got a nice glossy... Yes, look at that. I think that's pretty glossy. Oh, that's pretty shiny. But it's still going to have some decals on there. Oh, decals. And um, it'll have a gloss coat. And... I've been recommended to get a bit of cut and polish and just give it a little bit of a... Well, I don't think it needs it, really. It's um, it's not bad. That's shiny. Yeah, you can see reflections in it. That's looking okay. What about the body? Well, certain areas I can touch and certain areas I don't really want to get sticky fingerprints on. Not that my fingers are sticky. No, there's none of that going on here. Uh, well, there's quite a shine on that. You can see. It's um, reflecting the light beautifully. Mind you, it took me 12 coats to get this. I'm not kidding. The um, the paint well, was a bit too thin to start with. And I really, you know, I hardly noticed any difference over the yellow. It was, um, you know, the video I showed before, that's about six coats in before it actually started to show. So I was sort of putting a coat on and going, well, it hasn't changed. It's still yellow. And so it was coat after coat after coat. But I did get there. And uh, they were light coats. Away I went. I changed my mix after a while because I did actually jam up the um, the Iwata Neo. I did. I gunked it right up. And I, I don't know why because it shouldn't have really mattered unless there was cross-contamination. So I just quickly flushed it, put it aside, and I got the um, stock standard airbrush that came with that, um, that no-name compressor. Popped it on, gave it a flush, and I changed my ratio to one of thinner and two of the paint. Because that paint was very thin. Like when I mixed it, I went, it's already like a milky type thing. Why do you need to thin it? But anyhow, so I went one, two, right? That ratio was so much better. I was getting a really nice coverage. I could see what I was putting on. And that's when I started to get quite a, quite a gloss. So after that, I probably put, yeah, well, you know, I still put about half a dozen coats. The yellow is gone, but it's just slightly there because this isn't, it looks white on camera because the camera will be auto white balancing, but actually this has got a slight bit of yellow. So that's quite good. Really happy with that. Very, very happy. So all those parts have turned out nicely. Now, one thing that um, I'll show you that's of interest, the um, this part, which I had mentioned in the previous video. I don't know why they didn't glue that in now. They should glue that in now. It should be glued in, you know. Blah, blah, blah. Um, actually, it seems to be a method for the madness because when I put the primer on, I held this with a um, one of my little rods with calipers on, but I sort of did it at the back here, and um, that kind of worked, but it was pretty floppy. I was always worried about dropping it. And then I went, oh, hang on. I've got this thing for doing car bodies, right? You ever seen one of these? There for doing car bodies. And lo and behold, I remembered I could pop that out because it wasn't glued. I'd only dry fit in there. And then this. And as you saw, if you're watching, the um, it fits beautifully. And that allows you to get every angle. And this base comes off. So you've only really got to hold this bit. So you can get every angle, do that. Uh, the base is rotatable so that you basically, if you have a car body, you can kind of spin it around and get a nice, nice run. But um, Jim, have with that. Look at the shine. Look at the shine I've got. Very happy with that.
So um, how do we go? Well, the um, little clutch and brake reservoirs there are fine. I didn't overspray there. That's all looking good. But unfortunately, I've had some bleed in here to the cabin, which is very annoying because it's... Um, I can certainly get in there with the matte black. And matte black to the rescue. <laughs> yes. Yes, this will um, feather in nicely. I've always had such success using... Uh, Life colour matte black and feathering it into Steinerys black. Very young. They seem to go very well. So just a bit, a bit of detail work. Get the brush in there. Shouldn't be that hard a job. There we go. That's all fixed up. And uh, dashboard's in there. Just basically dry fit. It'll need the dials put in off those decals. I will get that done in the next video when we start to work on the front suspension. So that will be good. So there you have it. With a little bit of help from my minion over there. <laughs> All I have to do is a little bit of touch up with that matte black. I even snuck the steering wheel in, right? And look, the motor. Um, I just was going to put a couple of parts in. One thing led to another and I shaked it and uh, waved the Tamiya thing near it. And the whole motor went together. Well, nearly. That's That literally is dry fit. That's just clipped together. <laughs> it's amazing. That's Tamiya fit, at least for the motor. It's quite good. I've still got those little fit issues here. This is, um, yeah, I found the little screws that hold all that together. But I've still yet to tighten up those panels. That I will do in the next video. I'll get that all sorted out and straightened up. And these are those lovely decals that I got from Indical. Yeah, I've got them for all kinds of these um Formula One type sports cars and a number of other things. And that's for Bucknam because well, I'll tell you about him next time. But he actually had a better record with this vehicle than um, the English guy, which everyone wanted me to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah Bucknam did a better job, at least with this car. So because of that and the number 14, that's the one I'm going with. All right. And on that note, because I've just upset all the pomps. Look, if you like the video, of course, hit like, uh, you know, comment just be nice about it don't say anything horrible about the palms okay and um, hit that bell notification to subscribe you get to see my videos whenever and look if you really want to help me out basically buy me a curry yes something new buy me a curry and then I'll actually see some of the dollars it won't go to all the overlords at um, boob tube mm. enough said all right well, that's it for now. Next time I will make the motor properly and I'll show you how to do that. And I'm going to build the whole front end so I get the suspension on. There's lots more to come. I hope you're enjoying this series as much as I am actually enjoying my first Tamiya kit that I like. Yeah, yeah. And it's good. It's good to finally find one. All right. It's goodbye from Australia. And it's Hiro from Harry Denny.